Hello, it's Chris here. Now, today we're going to explore five common mistakes that beginners make when working with Swift UI and what to do instead. All right, so let's dive right in and start with mistake number one, and that is the excessive use of state properties in your view. Now, take a look at what we have here. We have a form with three state properties. That doesn't seem bad, but the problem is, as a beginner, if this is the only way you know how to do things, you might just start using state properties for everything because you only know this one way of doing things, right? The problem with using too many state properties like this is it can cause performance issues in your view. So let me show you a different way of doing things. So you can group these state properties into a struct. This is something you can do. This looks like a user, for example. So we'll create a user struct and we're going to have a username, right? We're going to have an email and we are going to have an age, right? And instead of having three different state properties, you can just have one. And you can then, you know, fill in the same information. So you can get rid of this now. And in here, you can still set a binding to that, like that. And essentially, you would get the same functionality as you did before. Except now, it's a little more clean. And of course, only group up the state properties that make sense into a struct like this. In this case, all of those state properties make sense. All right, so that's another way you can do things. And oftentimes beginners, they, they just haven't been taught that. And so excessive use of state properties. All right, let's go to number two. So common beginner mistake number two using Swift UI is to ignore the use of previews. And by default, you get a preview, but sometimes as you're building your UI, this is causing errors for you. It's stopping you from building your app. And so you just end up deleting it and you go flying blind and you end up thinking that You'll just run it in the simulator to see what it looks like. That's all fine and cool. But if you really know how to use previews and you invest the time to set up your previews like this, and let's bring that back out, you can see different orientations, different font type sizes, light mode, dark mode, all with a click of a button, or you can even have them all laid out at once. You can see how your UI looks like in these different scenarios so that you can fix them instantly without having to launch the simulator, make a fix, relaunch the simulator, and test out all of these different scenarios, right? So using previews can save you a lot of time. All right, moving on. Number three is not understanding how SwiftUI's layout system works, or maybe not knowing all of the different things that you can do with it to achieve maximum flexibility uh, in your SwiftUI layout. So for example, in this demo code right here, we want to add a margin to the left side and to the right side of our UI. So pretend that left and right, the, this is our main UI, but we want to add some padding to the left and right. Now, one way you might do that is to restrict the frame to 200, right? And yes, that does give you some padding over here. But the problem with this is that it's not very flexible because you're limiting your content to a certain width, in this case, 200. Another way you can do this instead is to set maximum width here to infinity, and then that would increase the width of your H stack in this case to uh, the very edges, the left and right, and then simply add padding on the horizontal axis. And then this would give you, um, obviously you could set it to more padding if you want, this is not specifying hard-coded uh, numerical values. And when you add other elements into it, it'll flow nicely and it'll be adaptive. So do take the time to understand what tools are available to you, things like spacers, things like alignments, frame, padding, and all that sort of stuff. And you'll achieve very fluid and flexible SwiftUI layouts. All right, let's move on to mistake number four. Number four is overcomplicating state management. So this is this is almost like the opposite of mistake number one, where we talked about overloading your views with a ton of state properties. In this case, 
you are overcomplicating it and abstracting it maybe too much when you don't need to. So in this example, we've got a form once again, and we've created an observable object for the form data with the first name and the last name. And here we have an observed object property for the form data. And we have the actual form right here. If you don't need to pass this data on elsewhere, uh, maybe you don't even have to group it like this. Maybe it is just simpler to use first name and last name like this, right? And it's very simply bind to those state properties here. If all that is needed is for these uh, properties, these pieces of data to be in this view. Right? Now I know it might seem like we're backtracking on number one, but remember mistake number one was over excessive use of state properties in your view, which can lead to performance issues and having a bloated view. So this issue is different. It's not using too many state properties, but it's actually the opposite, where it's overcomplicating how you're managing state. Um, perhaps in this specific scenario, you don't need to have a separate form data observable object just for this, especially if this data is going to be used in only this view. So it's going to depend on your project and your views, and you're going to have to strike that balance. All right, moving on to the last mistake we're going to talk about. Okay, for this one, I don't have a code example for you because this is more of a mindset shift. Now, this especially applies for people coming into SwiftUI from other programming languages that may not behave like SwiftUI. The common mistake that I'm talking about is not relying on SwiftUI's awesome automatic state management and view updating. Now, if you're coming from even UIKit, right, building iOS apps with Apple's older framework, you might not be used to this because in UIKit, you're manually managing the view. When something happens, you go and manually update this or update that or change this or change that. With SwiftUI, using a lot of the state properties, observable objects, that sort of thing that we've been talking about in this lesson, you can have all of those update changes automatically happen. So now that you're using SwiftUI, fully embrace that and forget that old way of thinking. All right, so that's five common mistakes that people who are new to SwiftUI tend to make. Do you recognize any of these in your own projects? Don't worry if you do, we're all on a learning journey. Speaking of that, if you've ever wanted to build your own apps, learn how to code, learn how to build UIs, all of that great stuff, check out our CWC Plus program over at codewithchris.com and we'll take care of you. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up button if you wanna see more and check out some of our other videos. All right, talk to you later.